But sin was rampant then, and the Bible says when Christ comes back, that will be the moral condition. And folks, we have to understand that we can choose to sin, but judgment is imminent. It was then, and it is now. Secondly, he said it will be as it was in the days of Lot. In Luke chapter 17, verse number 28, it was the same as happened in the days of Lot, okay? How was it in the days of Lot? He says that, the, how, what is the condition of the world going to be when Christ returns? It will be as it was in the days of Noah. It will be as it was in the days of Lot. How was it in the days of Lot? Well, I'd say a couple of things or a couple of characteristics of Lot's day. First of all, there was militant homosexuality during that time. Are you surprised at how quickly the homosexual movement has become militant? I mean, there is a clerk in Kentucky who has been jailed for not going along or not agreeing. There is a baker in Washington who has been fined. There are florists around the country who have been fined because they do not participate in same-sex marriage. So it's not enough now to say, I, I believe that, uh, that you should have the right to do what you choose to. Now then, it has to be embraced. So whenever I look at the day of Lot, I would say there are two characteristics. One was militant homosexuality, and secondly, spiritual mediocrity. For the first three and a half years of his reign... There will be peace and prosperity on the earth. As he establishes this kingdom for the first three and a half years, a time of peace and prosperity. He will establish one world government, and he will be the head of it. Now, John describes this somewhat in symbolic terms. In Revelation chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, John wrote the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits, and they are seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, the other has not yet come, and when he comes, he must remain a little while. John here is speaking of seven world empires. He is speaking of successive empires where an empire ruled the world. Now, he says that five have fallen. In other words, five are in the past. Five have come and have gone. So when the Antichrist then establishes his kingdom, his one world government, the Bible says that it will be anti-God, that it will be an atheistic empire that he develops. And we already see, it seems to me, we see some of this taking shape now, even in our own country, a country that was founded on God. And yet today we see that atheism is on, is on the rise in our country. As people are turning away from God, the Bible is set aside, prayer is under attack and so forth. The, the clerk in Kentucky I go back to, but she was put in jail. Why was that? Why was that? Because there is no place for natural law in a secular society. In other words, you can believe what you wish within the confines of the walls of the church, but you can't take it outside the church. So there is no place then for the Word of God in a person's life outside the church or in natural, uh, natural law in secular society. So it says in verse number 6, And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Now, folks, as we come to the end of time and as the Antichrist comes and establishes his kingdom, don't think that things are going to be favorable to Christianity and favorable to God. They are not. This is prophesied. This is what it says. It says that he is going to rule the world. He is going to establish an atheistic kingdom. He will establish a covenant with Israel. 